Welcome again. Right now, we're at the book of Romans. This is our first session in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. This is Paul's opening intro to the saints in Rome. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, a servant of Yeshua HaMashiach, called to be an apostle. Notice Paul says he's called to be an apostle. He doesn't even explicitly claim to be an apostle here. He just says he's called to be an apostle. Set apart for the good news of God, for the gospel of God. Set apart meaning to be holy, to be separated, to be called out from the world, okay? He's set apart and you know the Lord calls all of us to be holy, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. What Paul calls the Holy Scriptures here is the Tanakh, okay? They didn't have the New Testament, so to speak, back in those days. When Paul said Holy Scriptures, he's talking about the Tanakh. The prophets talking about Isaiah, David, Jeremiah, and so on and so forth. Concerning his son, that is concerning Jesus, who was born of the offspring of David. In the notes here, it says, or seed of David, according to the flesh, who was declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness. Here, Paul could be referring to what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration or during the baptism of Jesus, or both of those times, when God spoke himself and said, behold, my beloved son, by the resurrection from the dead. We just read the book of Acts where Paul was persecuted heavily for preaching the resurrection from the dead. And here within the first few opening verses, he mentions the resurrection of the dead. A very bold move by Paul here. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we received grace and apostleship. Notice it says we. So this is talking about Whoever his audience here is, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience, for obedience. A lot of disobedient people who call themselves Christians use Paul's letters to justify their disobedience by quoting Paul on grace or not by works and this kind of stuff. But Paul makes it very clear here. The job of the Christian is to obey. Paul says here to his audience in Rome, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience of faith. That is a very heavy statement right there. We, Paul said, he didn't say I. We, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience of faith among all the nations for his name's sake. For the name of Jesus' sake. You don't disobey, go away, and just, you know, free to disobey God, just free to go to hell. I mean, sorry, but that's basically what they're doing. All in the name of Jesus, all in the name of the love of Jesus. You know, Jesus loves me and, you know, his grace is upon me. Paul makes it very clear here. The grace is for obedience, for his name's sake, among whom you are also called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, wow, that is a seven verse greeting there. Look at it in context here. There are a lot of people who quote Romans, but they don't consider themselves to be saints. Paul said right here, right off the bat, that this is for those who are called to be saints. In other words, he didn't write the book of Romans to those who are not called to be saints. If you're not called to be a saint, you really don't have any business reading the book of Romans. Verse 8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is proclaimed throughout the whole world. 
For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit, in the good news of his son, in the gospel of his son, how unceasingly I make mention of you always in my prayers, requesting if by any means now at last I may be prospered by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established, that is, that I with you may be encouraged in you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. Now, I don't desire to have you unaware, brothers, that I often planned to come to you and was hindered so far. You know, sometimes I have to kind of smirk at Christians who say that every single word of the Bible, every single word of Paul's letters is for us today. If this is the case, Paul's coming. He said, often I planned to come to you and was hindered so far that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to foreigners, both to the wise and to the foolish. So as much as is in me, I am eager to preach the good news to you also who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the good news of Messiah, Christ, because it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first. It amazes me how many people quote that verse, okay? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God for salvation to all who believe. But they leave out the rest of it. They cookie cut it, you see. They leave out to the Jew, Jew first, and also for the Greek. For in it is revealed God's righteousness from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous shall live by faith. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. There are some Christians who believe that The so-called Old Testament is just all about works. And the New Testament's all about faith. The Old Testament, well, they're they're justified by their works. But since Jesus came, all we got to do is have faith now. And right now we're justified by faith, not by works. That is erroneous. The whole doctrine of righteous shall live by faith is Old Testament. Next time someone says to you that they're justified by faith, not by works, say that's Old Testament. And as always, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.